Hello, and welcome to A VO's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. And this show, <laughs> in case you didn't know what my name was, Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. And today is, uh, I think, a landmark episode because we're going to talk about the current, I think, viability of ACX, you know, and, um, you know, is ACX a sinking ship? You know, this is a tough, um, this is a tough episode to make because I think that, you know, for me, anybody who's followed my journey, Navio's journey, knows that, you know, and if you listen to the podcast, which you can check out the podcast, you know, there'll be a link below, um, but you, you, you know that my, my journey started on ACX, you know, as a voiceover artist. And, you know, if you're new, you don't know what ACX is, ACX is a portal, basically, that connects uh, authors, um, publishing companies to producers, as they call it, or voice actors. And it brings them together, independent people together to create audiobooks from current books that are being published on Kindle, which is owned by Amazon, right? And, you know, you then meet up, you know, you, you audition on ACX for audiobooks. And if, you know, you get chosen by the author or the rights holder, that goes up on Audible, you know, Amazon, etc. And I really built my first part of my voiceover career through ACX and doing royalty share books. Uh, I got on with a couple different publishing companies early on just by auditioning for books. And they kind of picked me up through ACX. I mean, we always worked through ACX. And, you know, I just pumped out book after book after book. And, you know, I still get paid today royalties from, you know, back when I started in 2017 on them. Now, I'll admit it's not as much, right? That's gone down over the last four, four and a half years. But I still get paid. You know, I still make a couple hundred dollars a month. I think that's the dream that, you know, we all had for ACX. But, you know, I wanted to talk to you about today my experiences working with a lot of people, a lot of voice actors, and what's happening on the platform and how I would approach it now compared to how I approached it back then. You know, back then, you know, when I was starting or a lot, when a lot of us started, we just were hungry. We want work. A lot of times we'll take whatever is there and there's nothing wrong with that. You got to do what you got to do when you're first starting out. Um, but at that time, you know, years ago, there wasn't as much. Um, I would just come out and say it, there wasn't as much scammers on ACX. Now there's a lot of. Uh, scamming going on um, and and in the form of basically you go on there, you know, you audition for an audiobook. And what happens is, is that it's actually not the person who it's not their they don't own the rights to the book that have published the audition. And what happens with ACX and I'm not exactly you know, I'm not sure why they haven't fixed this. Um, and but basically when. A rights holder or an author, for example, creates their own ACX account after the book is published. Okay, um, they type in their name and etc. And ACX populates books that they think could be owned by that author, and then it's their job to you know pick the books that are theirs. Well, you can see the obvious. Uh, you know, downside to that, right? I mean, someone just putting in names of authors who don't have audiobooks up yet and then claiming that it's their book because they've got to open, they can open a separate account because they got to, because you can't have, like, if you have a Kindle account, right? It is Amazon, but at the same time, you've got to choose a different account so they don't know. You know what I mean? If you are a publishing company, like it can be so many different. And I and I will admit that that is a really big challenge for ACX. Uh, and the only way I think to fix that is that they would have to across across Amazon, Kindle, ACX, all, all, everything would have to be completely the same 
So like you couldn't have people going on there and doing like you couldn't have a publishing company publish something over here through Kindle and then the rights holder who actually, you know, like owns the rights and they have a different account come through here and grab their you know the rights to do an audio book, which is different than the people who are publishing it. Like it can be a mess. I get it. But what's happening now is so many people at voice actors are picking up auditions for books, audiobooks, doing the auditions, getting chosen putting in hours and hours and hours of work because you guys know audiobooks takes a long time, right? It's the longest process, I think, in all of voiceover. And then what happens is that uh, ACX, Audible, they discover that the person who put up the audiobook and that you've been working with actually didn't have the right to do it. They don't hold the rights to it. They either scam in, they're trying to make a quick buck, and then all of a sudden... Now Amazon or Audible, they're forced to take that audiobook down and you are out all of that work. There's no uh, you know, no reconciliation, like there's nothing for you, and you're you're just you're you're kind of left high and dry <laughs> badly. And it's so frustrating. And this is happening a lot. And, you know, honestly, and, and maybe it was happening a lot when I was when I started, but it just didn't seem like that was as prevalent, you know, because now you can go on there and you can see books on there. You're like, wow, why is this book? You know, it's like main authors and stuff. And you're like, this is something's not right, because why would they put their book to publishing company? And then you see who's actually doing it. you're like, who is this? Right. It's it's sad. I mean, I know Ace, I'm sure they're trying everything they can to keep up, but it's just it's not, I think, the place that it was years ago. So with that being said, is it still a viable place? Absolutely. But here's how I would approach ACX and the point of this is that I think the royalty share program has tanked. And here's why, here's, here's the just a brief history about it if you're interested. Um, if you've been on the platform for a while, ACX used to award money differently Right, um, their affiliate money differently or their royalties differently, meaning that it used to be that when you um, did an audiobook, if someone signed up, right, for an account like for an Audible, um, an Audible subscription, uh, and they bought the audiobook that you create, you made, right, you got a percentage, you got a bounty. They called it bounties. And this was given, you split it with the author, okay? Um, and it was very, uh, it was good, it was a good thing because on top of you making the money for the royalties, if you had a couple people, like if you had 10, like it was like 20, if you got, you got $25, the author or the rights holder got $25 every time someone signed up. So if you had like 10 bounties a month, you got $250 on top of the royalties, so this was a nice thing that they did, but ACX, Audible, and everything, they changed all of that uh, and changed their whole price structure, and they made it so where it was all about you doing all the work yourself in order to, like, drive traffic, you know, do this kind of stuff, which put think, – think about it, put voice actors in a rough position because voice actors, it wasn't their – they didn't have the right – it's not their book. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of these people are were coming to Amazon or coming to Audible or ACX and going through this platform because the idea was is that you know by you know li you know licensing the content to ACX basically or to Audible, okay, Amazon that Amazon would then in turn you know promote and give you know benefits to the people. But I think after Amazon hit a certain level or Audible hit a certain level, I mean they're interchangeable. I know they're different, but they're they're owned by Amazon. Once they hit a certain level, I think of of people, they just began to not do that bounty anymore, and that really changed the whole entire landscape. I think of ACX, and the last couple of years, I think they really have declined after they switched around their whole fee structure. Because before it was very, it still was very lucrative to do. The main thing on ACX, which is what it was set up for, and I really do think that was the royalty share. That was the sharing process. That was to connect people who were just starting out or didn't have a lot of money and to be able to work with people who were good. And because it was more lucrative 
right? Because of the bounties and stuff. But after they changed that, it became very like, you know, why, you know, I'm going to make next to no money or this not worth it. And, and, you know, there's the, the scammings kind of run wild. So what had happened is people stopped working as hard, right? To do things to, to make it legitimate. And, you know, that has taken a big toll. So anyways, I just had to give you a little history lesson because I've been on the platform for a while and I remember, you know, that this has all been like a, you know, a, a series of events, you know, a series of unfortunate events, right? But now if you look at the platform, it still is viable uh, and I'm going to tell you how. So at this point, I would recommend that on ACX, you approach the platform with the idea, the mindset that there are people who are publishing books who are going to pay per finished hour, right? Who are going to pay for their books, not royalty share. So they're going to pay on the front end, not the back end. However, as you audition for these books and you get chosen for one, let's say you do an audition for a book and it's $250 per finished hour and the book is, you know, four hours. So, you know, that's $1,000, right? What I always do, by the way, first off, ACX doesn't collect this money. You have to collect, you and the and the rights holder transact together off of ACX through PayPal, whatever you have, all right? So that's an important um, note as well. So you have to make sure that, you know, you're sending that, that rights holder an invoice. But here's the thing. Always, 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 best case scenario, get them to pay you up front. Okay, worst case scenario, take half up front, half upon delivery. Now, basically, the delivery aspect is you uploading the finished files to ACX. The rights holder then um, signs off on it, says, I like this. We're good to go. And then a little button will appear. There will be a button in like the upper right-hand corner of your account, of your of the uh, upload files account saying, "Did were you paid for this book? Once you click that file, it will release the book to be published. But until you click that little button, excuse me, that file button, right, that says you've been paid by the rights holder, it won't release the files, okay? But here's the thing. You still had to do all the work, all right? And you've not been paid. And here's the rub. This is the difference with, like, working on another website, other, like, freelance websites, is that all of them, all of them at this point, not all of them, but the majority of the big ones put that money into an escrow account. So it is taken from the person. They've already paid, it's just being held in a separate account so that they can't come in and claim, okay, well, we want to hire you to do this work but not pay you anything. Does that make sense? So that's a big difference with this particular process. So that's why I think because ACX doesn't – there is no escrow account. There's no – the only thing that you're ever paid through ACX is if you have royalties, right? Everything else is paid between you and the person that you're actually working with. So that's why it's important that you collect at least at bare minimum half up front – and then half upon delivery, okay? If you don't do this, you risk the rate of them coming back and saying, you know what, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Or, you know what, I don't have the money to pay you right now. Or can you accept, you know, uh, one-fourth of or half or less than what we, you know, or, you know, can I pay you next week? I mean, you know, like, you, you've got to, you know, and, and a lot of people are kind of like, hey, I don't want to deliver a service, you know, and then ask people to pay for it before I deliver it. That's not the way it's done. But you got to understand that we have switched to an e-commerce world. You can thank Amazon for whatever. You can thank them for that. But we've switched to an e-commerce world, right? We ha- Even those services, or we're still services, and we want to give our best service to people, you still have to protect yourself as well, okay? And you've got that means you've got to be paid at least – the money has to be at least shown that it is there, whether it's held in an escrow. Now, you could set up your own escrow, right? There's companies that allow you to set up your own escrow where you can hold the money in escrow and you can tell them, that, listen, we're going to put it in escrow. All right, this is the account, you know what I mean? And, you know, when we're done, you know, we can release it, you know. what, what like, like, you could figure that out. There's different ways now that figure that out for us as small business owners to use. But in the end, I always at least make sure you're paid half up front, half upon delivery. And if they're not willing to do that, walk away from the book because you run too much of a risk of just doing all this work for nothing. Okay, when you could be spending your time, right, you know, marketing yourself to get bigger paying jobs. 
So anyways, I know this was a little longer video than I intended on making, but, um, you know, I think that, you know, as the VO's journey grows and the Academy grows and after the years, you know, going coming up on almost five years being in the, the voiceover industry myself now and, and a lot going on, working with so many people and being so blessed with the community, with the VO's journey community, um, is that, you know, it's important that, you know, we talk about the reality of these platforms and the, the truth of them um, so that, you know, it's easy for me to say, yes, go on this platform, on this platform, on this platform. But, you know, there are realities that I see. And I think it's important that, <clears throat> you know, we discuss them so that you can dodge, again, all the stuff that I seem to step on or, unfortunately, I see other people stepping in. Okay? All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please hit that like and subscribe button. And check out Avio's Journey Elite Academy, as always. Uh, lively classes. Um, uh, live classes every Monday through Thursday. And um, lots of amazing stuff to grow your voiceover business. And a community that is there to help you all the time. It's really amazing. Uh, there'll be a link below, or you can go to Avio'sJourney.com. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.